am I the astronaut for insisting that my mom pay back the money she made me owe to a thrift store? The other day, I, 22 male, went with some friends to various thrift stores to see if we could find a leather trench coat for a reasonable price. We found one, and it's exactly what I was looking for. The coat is not in pristine condition, but I didn't care. The price seemed reasonable, and I paid for it using my debit card. I got home and showed my mom the coat. She asked how much it cost. I told her, and she said that it was awfully expensive for a used coat. She asked if I could show her the receipt, so I did. She then asked if it was possible that they charged me twice. I told her no, that I was fine with the amount I paid, and I was just happy to have the coat. She told me that she was just making sure that I had done the math correctly since it's something I struggle with, and that I was keeping track of the money in my account to be sure there was enough for the trip my friend and I are going on in January. At this point, I was really starting to get annoyed. I told her again that I was fine with the amount that I paid and I still had enough for the trip. We had already booked our plane tickets and reservations. I told her that I appreciated her help, but there wasn't any issue. And could she please let this go? She gave a very reluctant sounding, okay. I went to my room to lie down for a while. Later that evening, my mom told me that she had called the store asking if they were sure they hadn't charged me twice. Initially, they told her that it did seem like I overpaid for the coat, so they issued a partial refund. But they then called back a few minutes later and said that they in fact had charged the right amount. They tried to cancel the refund, but in case I got it, I would need to pay them back. I was pissed and yelled at my mom that I told her multiple times that I was fine with the amount that I paid and she needs to respect my boundaries. She admitted that she should have just listened and that she would be the one to pay them back if the refund went through and I could keep the money for my trip. I told her thank you and thought that that was the end of it. A few days later, I checked my account and saw that hundreds of dollars, roughly four times the amount I paid, had been deposited into my account. This doesn't seem like a problem. <clears throat> I showed it to my mom and she told me that I needed to pay it back. I told her that she had told me she would let me keep the money and be the one to pay them back. Okay, I see where this is going now. <clears throat> she said that I could keep the money she thought they owed me, but not the additional money. I told her that I wouldn't owe this money if she hadn't meddled, which is true. She agreed that she was in the wrong, but it's nonetheless my responsibility and the right thing to do. I reminded her that her reasoning for doing this was because she was worried I wouldn't have enough money for my trip, and now I have an additional $300, so mission accomplished for her. She's insisting that I pay it back, but I feel that she should keep her promise and be the one to pay, as I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for her. Um, Okay, um, <laughs> the question is, am I the asking out for insisting that my mom pay back the money she made me owe to a thrift store, which I feel like is a misleading title, right? And, and you know what? Mom shouldn't have meddled. He's right about that. Should not have meddled. But this is like a, it's a thrift store. I'm going to make an assumption here that it's a not-for-profit organization that, that they have a community mission where they actually do some good. And this was an error where they accidentally sent too much money back to him. And they were trying to undo it anyway. So at some point, they're going to be aware that they sent him way too much money, and then he's just going to be the asshole that won't return the accidental money that this not-for-profit organization sent to him. I understand a lot of thrift stores are not not-for-profit, and they're for-profit organizations, but for the sake of the story, because we don't know, let's assume that it is a not-for-profit organization with a local community mission. So... They accidentally sent him too much money and he's like, nah, I'm keeping it. Ma, you can you can pay this stuff back. And I think her offering to pay back whatever partial refund that they had issued in case it actually went all the way through makes sense. It does not apply to them sending hundreds of dollars accidentally through to this. So, yeah, you're an asshole, OP. How big an asshole are you? How big a boy are you? So, yeah, whatever the difference is, is what he owes them back. And in this case, I think. You know, I think mom's offer to pay back whatever partial refund that went through is now negated as well. Now, what he can do is he can pull the money out, give it to his mom, and she can go return it to them. And that would be her still still making some kind of penance here for her meddling, which caused all of this shit to happen. But he's still an asshole for wanting to keep this money, right? In a world without consequences, money just shows up in your bank and you're like, oh, cool. But there's a consequence for this one. It would have a negative effect on the community. He's not viewing it as stealing it because they accidentally gave it to him. And he's like, oh, sweet. Then it's a gift. It's not stealing, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. Because you know exactly what happened. Where would we put him, though? We can go ahead and get the everyone sucks here out of the way. 
Because, yeah, this happened because of her. She shouldn't meddle. He repeated himself several times and said, don't, don't, don't. And she still did. Um, I don't know that this is an evil thing. It kind of sounds like a he's 22. So still still a young person. He's still young. This is a brozo thing. It's just it's just something that is probably lack of life experience and uh, and a very simplified worldview probably create here and i don't know that if he that he was evil he just isn't thinking everything through here now it's wrong it's definitely wrong the way he's trying to apply it here but i don't know that he's evil for it he's just trying to take advantage of multiple people here so let's go ahead and put him on two definitely should not have done this definitely shouldn't have i don't think he's evil he's just trying to use some backward logic to to make himself feel okay with this and it's not it's not it's not okay Am I the asking for telling my daughter if she hates her stepmom so much, she is free to leave? My daughter is 20 and in college. She has a dorm on campus, but she doesn't live there. I love my daughter, but she can be a lot. Drama follows her everywhere, and I was hoping she would grow out of it, but it never happened. Due to this, she has gone through multiple friend groups, and as she puts it, they are jealous, so she doesn't have college friends. Now, I married her stepmom when my daughter turned 18. I was never married, and her bio mom wasn't in the picture, so this was an adjustment, but I want to make it clear that I did the right steps. I introduced them when I was serious two years in. I spent more time with her. I didn't force them together. We made boundaries for my wife like punishment comes to me, not her. When she was struggling, I got her into therapy and did sessions with her. She stopped when she hit 18 since I couldn't make her go. My daughter is making it impossible for them to get along. If my wife tells her food is ready, she gets pissed that she is bothering her. If she doesn't tell her, then she's pissed that she wasn't invited. It's contradiction after contradiction. I have talked to her. My wife has tried to do what she asked, and then she is pissed that she did that. It's impossible. Now to the main issue. My wife's birthday was yesterday. I put out her presents and cake on the table. Oh, no. Don't you tell me. Don't you tell me. I had work to do, so I left it all there. I came back, and all of her presents were opened. And my daughter was eating a piece of cake. She done did it. She done crossed the gosh. She did it. She crossed the line. She crossed the line. I mean, she had crossed the line before, but she really crossed the line this time. I asked why the f*** she would do that. She told me she didn't deserve birthday presents. Okay. You sniveling little shit. (laughs) I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? I did. This is when I had enough. And I told her if she hated her stepmom so much, she could leave. That she has a dorm and I don't want to see her until an apology to me and my wife happens. She started crying and called me a jerk. I've been getting a lot of texts from her and I'm doubting my decision. Am I the ass cannot? Hold up. Okay, last line here really bothers the ruined cake out of me. Says I've been getting a lot of texts from her and I am doubting my decision. So what is she saying to try to guilt you into feeling like you did the wrong thing here? You're obviously being played obviously being played because you didn't regret your decision until you said you were getting texts from her. So what is it that she's saying to you that is playing you like a fiddle and making you feel bad here? You did everything you could. She's an adult now. She needs to get her shit together and she cannot treat people like this and expect them to continue catering to her. She's always going to be your daughter. There is a line. There's a line that shall not be crossed that comes to respect, right? She's your kid. You're always going to love her. Your kids can just still do stupid things. And it is your job to still continue teaching her what is and is not okay. And this is not okay. And for her benefit, you shouldn't feel bad for this. For her benefit, you have to teach her that this is not okay. She's 20. She's 20 now. She knows better. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she just thinks that she can run all over you because there are no consequences for anything that she does because you have to accept her no matter what. She thinks she can do whatever the hell she wants as evidenced by her opening up your wife's presents and eating her cake because she doesn't deserve presents. Unless your wife has done something to warrant this, which your daughter is unwilling to to tell you, which means there is nothing, this is unacceptable. And I think you're doing the right thing here by saying, you can't come back until an apology happens. I would follow that up and say, until an apology happens and you are only allowed to continue being around here if 
your behavior changes. This will not happen again, ever, ever. This is about so much more than the cake. The cake is just the icing on the cake, if that makes sense. It is everything before this was already terrible and we need to put her on the ASCON scale. Let's do that into the doc. Okay. There is a, uh, there, there is a comment from the dad that's that Tony spark is going to going to paste in here so that we can read it. And then we're going to put daughter on the ASCON scale here. Okay. So here, here's a comment from OP just, uh, just to put everyone's mind at ease and says, I'm confused why they think she has a personality disorder with the therapy. You would think that would have been noticed. Not once did anyone think that bad behavior doesn't equal personality disorder. I know people are quick to, to blame behavioral problems on behavioral disorders. That's not always the case. And even if there is some kind of disorder at 20 years old, most people learn how to deal with those kind of things and keep themselves somewhat in check. At least uh, there's, there's another comment from OP here. I grew it up in a suck it up type of home. So I really tried to make her home safe and where she can express anything. I wish I just told her at the beginning that she needs to cope. So I think I went too far in the other direction. Okay. Okay. So, so um, now OP is feeling bad for being too coddling with her and allowing her to be too expressive and, uh, and not never giving her the tough love of saying, suck it up and walk it off, rub some dirt on it. And now, now you're going to have to balance it. That's the tough part. You're going to have to balance it by now running hard the opposite direction to try to balance this thing out. And it's a tough lesson. And we talk about this a little bit, but when you try to protect your kids from everything, when they get out into the real world, it is that much more of a shock to their system because they haven't been able to ease into it. I am alarmingly concerned about how your daughter is going to be able to function in the real world at this point. And, and one of the things that I've learned over the past few years or a couple of years, really, is that how your kids, especially teenagers behave at home is completely different than how they behave in the outside world, right? Your kids can be completely open, unfiltered with you, and that can come across very raw. Um, but but they can completely control themselves in the real world and act completely differently. So hopefully this is something that she does just at home. If not, big old red flags here. Big old red flags. I, I think we know where daughter's going on the ASCON scale here. I think it's, it's, she's she's an evil little shit. She's a 20-year-old. I'm still calling her an evil little shit because she has the mentality of, um, of a toddler who's not getting her way right now. And it's malicious. It is 100% malicious. Right now, OP, your daughter may not be an evil person, but she's behaving in an evil way. And although she's 20, there's still some responsibility on you to, to help show her the way to correct that and to help reinforce what the right thing to do is. But, uh, I mean, let's go back and address this for a second, though. She stopped going to therapy when she turned 18 because dad couldn't force her to do it anymore. OP married his new wife when daughter was 18, right? So those two things coincided here. She clearly needs to go back and deal with things because she is acting out about this specifically. You can't force her to do it, though. She's an adult now. She has to make that decision on her own. And she has to realize on her own that if this is affecting her life this badly, then she needs to go address the problem. So I'd say just, you know, try to convince her to go, but you can't force her to go. But you also can't solve this problem for her. And she's probably not going to solve this problem for herself. So suggest it, recommend it as often as possible. Um, and right now she's not allowed to come back until she fixes things. And she's not going to be able to stay around until she permanently fixes things. And that's going to require therapy. So maybe just tie it in with that statement. It's tough. The title of this story is, Is My Dad the Asshole for Kidnapping My Aunt's Dogs? Hi, huge fan. I watch your stories on TikTok every day. This is my story and feel free to use and share it. Thank you. My aunt is a lunatic. It's not dementia. She's only in her 50s. All the women in my family live to 90 because only the good die young. She's always been like this. She turned up to my parents' courthouse wedding in a blue taffeta ball gown that filled a row by itself, and her two sons, my cousins, have spent their lives running interference between her and anyone they wanted to make a good impression on. They're adults now and keep their respective partners well away from her. The oldest eloped, and not even my good Catholic Nana said a word against it. Wow, the 
She seems like a character. I need to see a picture of this gal. Since her kids fled, oops, I mean flew, the nest, it's just her and her two dogs at home. My aunt's dogs are her fur babies. She has two Labradors and dotes on them. She doesn't train them beyond toilet training, exclusively speaks in high-pitched baby talk, and dresses them in matching outfits. The dogs were constantly, terribly ill and being taken to vets. Uh, <laughs> you got a character on your hands here. We all presumed she was attention-seeking and being a hypochondriac, but we live a few hours away and never saw the dogs ourselves. Plus, the vet clinics kept discharging them, and she had to find new clinics each time. I swear if she named one dog Gypsy and the other dog Rose. After she had gone through seven vet clinics who were all, according to her, incompetent and wanted her babies to suffer, my dad finally pressed her for more. It turned out that their awful demands were that she stopped feeding her pups their favorite snack chocolate covered raisins yeah i don't know how those dogs were alive either my dad immediately jumped in the car went to her house and took the dogs he brought them back to our house and waited for her to come pounding on the door she did it was loud my dad gave her a come to jesus talk with a lot of swearing and refused to give the dogs back until she sat down in front of him and googled what happens if you give dogs the wrong food he even found some horrible allergic reaction videos and made her watch those she had been feeding them exclusively human food including things like onions that dogs absolutely can't eat there were lots of tears and screaming but she did finally listen and only then did my dad give the dogs back Happy ending. This was a few years ago, and she did stick to her word. The dogs shockingly stopped being ill. It's a miracle. Bubble, the older of the two dogs, sadly met his maker to cancer two years ago, but Crumble is still alive and barking at leaves at a very respectable 11-year-old. Less happy ending, her youngest child, my other cousin, is getting married in January and is having a family wedding. Pray for him and his poor bride. Oh, no. Yeah, I can't imagine that his mom is going to try to steal the spotlight at all. So the question here is, is my dad the asshole for kidnapping my aunt's dogs? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. This is terrible. And uh, and your dad did the right thing here by, by immediately getting in the car, going over to this person that, that you all actively avoid like your life depends on it and rescuing the dogs from there uh yeah for for a while i thought she was completely gypsy rosing them and uh and just was you know a munchausen's by proxy just projecting on her dog and on her dogs and and going that route but no no she's just feeding them things that she shouldn't feed them but never ever ever took the time to be like what does the food that i'm giving them do to them and is that somehow related to what's making them sick? Never, ever, ever took the time to do that. Also never took the time to be like, should I not wear this gigantic blue taffeta dress to someone's wedding that takes up an entire row? So it's just oblivious, I guess, in general. Janine says I wouldn't have given them back. You know, I kind of thought about that. I'm like, maybe maybe there needs to be like a, 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 a stabilization period where where you guys kept the dogs got them eating the kind of stuff that they should be eating got them healthy and then returned them to her with a very strict food schedule that would have been the safer route here but but apparently uh dad went clockwork orange on her and held her eye her eyelids open and forced her to watch all of these things to just completely scare the hooey out of her into never doing it again and it worked so it was a gamble but it paid off uh you know what i have that blue taffeta dress in a storage unit it's in a storage unit all by its own because it's so big it takes up the entire eight by ten unit but i think i can go get it out <laughs> Uh, this is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for not getting my boyfriend a birthday cake? Damn it. I'm 27 female and my boyfriend Dan is 33 male. We've been together for 11 months and moved in together last month. Since it was the first birthday since we started dating and moved in together and also because I just wanted him to feel special, I asked if he wanted to throw a party at our place, which he enthusiastically agreed to. I organized a dinner with his parents on the day of his birthday, and the party was two days later because he couldn't get time off work until then. I invited all of his close friends, some of his work colleagues, and the family members I knew he would want there, including his parents, who said they'd only be dropping by quickly. That sucks. The guest list quickly swelled to 150 people. 
That's a birthday party right there, tell you what. Most of whom I didn't know and had never met, so I spent most of the evening hosting and meeting people. His parents missed the singing of happy birthday, but when they got there and I told them I had saved them a few birthday cupcakes to take home, they were livid and asked why there was no cake. I said, when I asked Dan, he said he couldn't give a flying horse shit what we did for cake as long as loved ones were there. So I got a cupcake table instead so we wouldn't have a lot of leftover cake. Neither of us wanted to eat. This made them angrier, and they said I didn't appreciate their son enough to even get him a cake. Dan was on my side initially, but now is taking theirs. What? Dan, what are you doing? And they are harassing me about not appreciating their son enough, along with some family members. Things are really tense between Dan and I because I know he agrees with me, but won't take my side, and we've been fighting over it. I feel like no one is on my side with this. Am I the astronaut? Cupcakes are cake. It it is literally in the name. You got hundreds of them because you had 150 people there. and, And if you have 150 people, unless it's a wedding or something, logistically, it makes a lot more sense. To do cupcakes. And if he said he didn't give a flying horse shit what you did for cake, cupcakes made sense. You did get him a cake. In fact, you got him hundreds of cakes. They were just really small. I don't know that that hand motion was required for that, but you know what I mean. This is ridiculous. The the parents being shitty about this, I'm like, eh, whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. You're mad because you think OP doesn't care enough to get your son a cake, yet you couldn't care enough to spend more than a few minutes at his birthday party, and you said you were just swinging by. So, But it is Dan being the swing vote here and changing his mind from being okay with it to being like, you know what? You're right. I am, I, I, I am unappreciated. I should have had a cake. You're right. No, Dan, because this would be one of those times where you want to throw the challenge flag and be like, okay, watch where you said you didn't give a flying horse shit. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so now you've changed your mind. Dan, you're an idiot. You're being manipulated by your parents. Your parents are assholes. OP, you did the right thing, but this is an indicator for you of what the rest of your life is going to be like because he's clearly being controlled and now you can't trust his words anymore because they're so easily swayed by his parents. (sighs) And now you have to think about those life decisions where their opinion is going to get involved, like purchasing a house, having kids, where you live, everything. I think you're going to have to have a conversation with him and be like, hey, um, do you have your own opinion or or do your parents like send you messages for everything they want you to say and you just regurgitate that? Are you just following their script? Is that what you're doing? <clears throat> Not OK. Not OK. Uh, NTA for you here, OP. 100 percent NTA. Parents are right here because not only did they not care enough to do anything other than drop by, but they meddled and created drama when they were there. There are shit stirrers, like professional shit stirrers who do this for a living. And it's all they do is they make appearances and stir up shit and then leave. Right. And maybe they do that to distract from the fact that they, that they didn't care enough to spend some time there. That is a possibility. This could be a distraction, but their ability to sway him so easily is hugely concerning for me. And I'm going to red flag that again. And I do think that Dan needs to go on the scale here. Dan, 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 Dan it, Dan. (sighs) He definitely could have done that differently. He definitely should have done that differently. I'm thinking he definitely shouldn't have been the swing boat here and changed his mind just because his parents were upset. I'm going to put him at a two. He might be a one. His parents are a one, but I feel like he's just being manipulated by his parents. So I'm putting him at a two. He's allowing it to happen, which is what gets him up to being a two, but he needs to change it. He needs to change this and stop allowing himself at 33 years old to get fired up because his parents have a problem with something that he didn't have a problem with before. Bullshit. Not okay. And be an adult, Dan. Come on, Dan. Eat one of the cupcakes, Dan. Put the cupcake in your mouth and stop talking, Dan. Just do that. The title of this story is, My mom was the target of a romance scam, but won't stop talking to the scammer. For context, my dad has had a neurological disorder that causes him to sometimes be mean to people he cares about. As the one who lives with him, my mom is the one who bears the brunt of that. Last Thanksgiving, my mom confided in me that she met someone, we'll call him Jimmy, on Facebook and had been talking to him for months. 
The person was allegedly the lead singer of an 80s metal band that had a one-hit wonder that gets played on New Year's Eve a lot. What the what a persona to assume here. She said he contacted her after she commented on one of the band's posts, and they've been talking ever since, romantically. I asked her if he's ever solicited money from her, and she said no, with the exception of the money she had to send for her super fan VIP box that he was sending her. <clears throat> Notice the, the verbiage there was sending her. Not sent, not has received, was sending her. I asked how much, and she didn't know. So we looked at her bank account, and it was over $8,000 by then. That better be a damn fancy VIP box. I explained to her that this was a scam, pulled up the FBI website and showed her warnings about such scams, and even emailed the band's management who replied immediately and said it was a scam. My mom acted like she believed me and said she would stop talking to him. Internally, I went into panic mode, called my sister, and told her to meet me at a gas station where I told her the whole story. She confronted my mom about it too, and we both doubled down that it needed to stop then and there. We decided it was best not to tell my dad as we were unsure how he would react. But with his condition, if he was already mean to her, this would have made it so much worse. However, as the months went on, she refused to stop, no matter what we did or said or the toll it took on her relationships with both of us, but especially with my sister. Things came to a head in August when her Facebook account had been hacked and stolen. She messaged me one day worried that her email had been hacked, so I logged in to make sure the account was secure and updated the password. When I logged in, I saw a bunch of emails from band management and Interpol. There's a ton to unpack there, so for the sake of brevity, here's the short version. Apparently, after my sister and I got on her case, she started asking Jimmy questions and was eventually fed a fabricated story about how his phone had been stolen at a show and the person she sent all the money to was an imposter who was defrauding her. But now she was talking to the good Jimmy, who got his, who got his band management involved and they put her in touch with Interpol. The emails from them basically said that they were looking for the bad Jimmy, but in order to start an investigation, she needed to pay $4,500 up front. Dude, Interpol is not a skeezy private eye office down the street where you have to pay them to investigate. It's that the... Oh. Her emails back indicated that she intended to do it, and I realized I couldn't sit on this any longer and allow her to keep sending money. I called my cousin, who I'm close with, to vent and ask advice, and she started putting pieces together. My aunt had been worried about my mom for months because not only was she acting weird, but she was borrowing large sums of money, $500 to $1,500, from four of her five siblings, but had borrowed almost $8,000 from my aunt alone. I knew I needed to alert my family to get their help, but also to make sure they didn't send her more money. I called my brother and filled him in on everything and then did the same with my aunt. A lot happened over the next six weeks and things escalated. For one thing, we learned that the amount of money that she sent was dramatically higher than I ever imagined. Over $40,000. We tried the tough love approach, the compassion approach, everything we can think of, and nothing is working. Finally, at the end of September, we went to their house to try and help figure out a way out of this. However, I got my hands on her phone and started going through it and found much more than I was prepared for. This man was trying to convince her to divorce my father, and she was going along with it, sharing plans with him. We all got into it for hours and a lot was said. Ultimately, I confiscated her phone. She's on my plan and I pay for it. Things were particularly ugly. She tried getting her phone back from me to the point of putting her hands on me as I was trying to leave. I've never seen her like this. She was fully unhinged and not the mother I know. A couple of days later, she called my brother, sister, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and me crying and apologizing. It felt like we had finally gotten through to her and she was going to start doing better at life. With the phone in hand, I went to the FBI to file a report. However, didn't get much help as it's something I have to do online and must document each individual financial transaction in detail. And there are a lot of them with a lot of details. Since she didn't have a phone and they don't have a computer or anything, she started emailing him from work. However, he slipped up when replying to her and accidentally emailed both her work and personal email, which is how I got wind of it. 
I warned her that if they caught her emailing this guy from her work email, she'd be fired. The next month calmed down a lot. To my knowledge, she had no contact with him and no way to contact him. Then last Thursday, she called me crying, said she'd been let go from her job. She said she needed her phone back to look for a new job. I understood and agreed and planned to meet up with her over the weekend to give it back to her. However, that night, my dad took a spill while taking the trash cans down to the street and hit his head. So I ended up going there that night to take him to the ER. I looked her in the eye and told her I was reluctantly trusting her and that if she messed this up, it was going to be very bad. She promised no shenanigans, so I gave it to her. The next afternoon, I looked in her email and sure enough, she was emailing him again. Wowza. I immediately called her from work and lost my shit. I told my siblings and they have all gave her a piece of their minds as well. We've been fighting since then. Then today, I saw that she reset the password to her Bitcoin account, which is how she was sending Jimmy money. I calmly called her and asked about it, but that turned into a fight. I texted my siblings and let them know, and it again escalated. Come to find out that she was fired from her job for emailing this guy from her work email. She's still talking to him and has no intention of stopping. At this point, my siblings and I are discussing how to protect my dad, but that he now needs to be involved. Shit, he still doesn't know? Oh my god. We are talking about setting up powers of attorney, his own banking, contingencies in case of divorce, and so on. We all called her and told her that we would be letting my dad know what was going on, and she told us that she's already told him. I, I don't know, because, you know, everything she's told you up to this point has been a lie, so don't believe it. We told her to put him on the phone, and she did. He tells us the story she told him, which put the dollar amount at 8K, not 40K, omitted the romance aspect of it, and had no mention of anything that would make her look bad. So she told him something. She told him that she got scammed out of eight grand and that was it. And he believes her. He told us, she's my wife of 46 years. All of you can get and hung up on us. I don't know what to do. Holy shit. Uh, so yeah, this was a ride. This was a journey. Uh, can you, I can't imagine, can't imagine like my mother being stuck into this, this situation and not being willing to do anything about it to get herself out. Joining me to talk about this story is Candy Thunder. I think uh, you guys might get mad at me, but I actually feel bad for the mom. Um, and it's because of the first line where she said that her dad is really mean, like they don't know what's going on. And I think this woman was so lonely and in need of like love and affection that she literally paid $40,000 to some spammer on the internet because it made her feel good. It made her feel like somebody cared. And it's so messed up. Like it's messed up that she did this, but she was freaking lonely. Like, yeah, and lonely right. can loneliness can drive a person insane. Like to not feel like that connection to anyone. And I don't think she had that connection. So if this was my mom, like I would be pissed at what she did. I would be pissed that she lied to my dad. But I would also want to fix the freaking problem because she she was in so deep. She had to have had some kind of like I don't know. Like I just feel bad for her. I feel I literally legitimately feel bad for this mom. There's lonely. <laughs> But she got addicted. Oh, for sure. Like that affection, like fed that that missing part of her. And so she just, she went in so freaking deep. And at this point, I, without like taking away her email and taking away her, however she was contacting this guy, unless you pull that from your mom, like she's going to keep going back. It's yeah. like an addiction. It's she's like a, a drug. She's an addict. Yeah. Yeah. And she keeps, keeps getting that fix. Right. And so it's like, you need to s delete everything or monitor their finances. I do believe what they said about doing with the dad and like making sure that he has the money he needs because it could be that the dad is have like dementia well, they, they or something. Brought, yeah, but I guess. Like something yeah. could be starting with the dad and they need to be able to make sure that the money is there for him. To, I'm sure it's his money too. Yeah. Replace like her talking to this guy with or right. anything else. Right. She's lied. She's borrowed money. She's stolen money. She's alienated herself from her family. If you replaced that with like any kind of actual substance, she'd be checked into a facility by For now. Sure. And she, yeah, she she got herself fired from her job because of this. So it, she, this is an addiction, and it's it's just like any other. And there has to be drastic action taken to do something about it. Screw the freaking people who think scamming. You're disgusting, despicable humans. Right. Like to do this. It's like the same people that are stealing content. Just taking yeah. advantage of people. You're just taking yeah. things from others. And I can't imagine doing that to somebody else and being like, yeah, this is how I'm going to live. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to use this on somebody else's time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you.
This follower submitted story is titled, Am I the astronaut for not wanting my partner to hang out or speak to one of his coworkers? Hi Dusty, thank you for taking on my story. I've been watching your videos for a while now and need some advice, but I think I know the answer. My partner, 32 male, and I, 29 female, have been dating for two and a half years. We have a two-year-old son together. It's fair to say that my partner isn't the loyal type, but I thought after having a child, he would mature up and stop all this nonsense. I've caught him out a few times, unfortunately, but stayed hoping he would change. But this recent catch has got me going crazy. God, I, should, I should have done this right when OP said here, it's fair to say that my partner isn't the loyal type. This is not going in a good direction already, OP. P, my partner, was talking about his coworker, G, 23 female, just casually, and I didn't think anything of it. I went to charge his phone and make sure he had his alarm set for work, and when I went to get rid of the tabs on his phone, I saw a text message saying, hey, gorgeous, and it was to G. I immediately went into the messages and started reading previous ones. They wanted to meet up at the beach, possibly with her son, and hang out, and he also sent her money, which made me even more mad. What the? Just to clarify... He never wants to go or come out to the beach with our son, and we have been struggling with money pretty much since we had our son. Sometimes I have to ask my dad for money just so we can get by. I decided to message G on social media, and she was honestly rude. I told P that I didn't want him to speak to her anymore. He blew up on my face saying there was nothing going on and I have insecurities that he can hang out with females and, uh, and he was just helping her out with money, nothing more. Mm. Normally when people, you know make a donation to a worthy cause, they say, hey, gorgeous, and it's all, it's all very innocent. Am I going crazy? Why say, hey, gorgeous, if there wasn't something to it? And why not include our family on a beach date? Money issues I just can't get past because he always complains that we are behind in bills. Also, he has now changed his password on his phone. So, am I the astronaut for not wanting my partner to hang out or speak to one of his coworkers? Uh, no, but you're the asshole to yourself for still being with this dickweed. Clearly, he doesn't value you at all. Clearly, he doesn't respect you at all. Clearly, he's not going to step up and be the man that you want him to be in your family here. This is not going to change. So either you're accepting who he is and just accepting the fact that he's not going to show you the kind of love that you deserve, but he's also going to bankrupt you all and keep you poor because he's giving money to women that he finds attractive for whatever reason. It, none of it makes sense. And this is one of those things where I think I think a lot of young families specifically stay together because they're like, we don't we don't want to break up our family. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, you are setting the example for your child right now of, of what love and a relationship should be. And also I am telling you right now, if, if you are staying together because you don't want to break that family up because you think that, that that's somehow the magic to happiness for your child, your child is much more likely to be happy and to grow up happy. If they have two separate happy homes rather than one miserable one, I don't know what home life is, is like for you right now, but you've got a two year old, You've got time to get this right. You've got time to make the right decision so that the the example that they see growing up here isn't isn't oh it's it's okay to get cheated on. It's okay to treat someone disrespectfully like that. This is love. This is what love is. You choosing you isn't really a selfish thing because you choosing you, you choosing happiness, your kid will see. Your kid is watching and this is the bar that lights the path that they're going to follow. You have to show them how you want them to live by living that way yourself. And that's the hard part. And that I think is it conflicts with that, that internal need to keep that family together. And I, and I know because I've been in that position too, you know, you stay in those situations because it's like, I don't want to bust our family up for our kids, but sometimes you need to bust your family up for your kids. I know it's hard to wrap your brain around right now, but it's true. It's tough. It is tough. Tough. Yes, it's going to be difficult. It, it would be difficult, you know, raising raising a child as a single mom. Um, but there's there's worthy pain. There's positive pain. Like it's going to be hard, but rewarding. Right now, you are actually experiencing more pain. But this isn't rewarding pain that you're experiencing right now. Because right now, you're. It sounds like you're you're pretty much raising your kid on your own anyway. But also. You're feeling all of this additional pain because you're being treated like garbage. You are worth so much more than that. And you deserve to be happy and you do not deserve to be treated like this. Accept that, number one. 
but even more so, that is not the example that you want to set to your child. I know it's difficult. I know that's hard, but that's what it is. But there are so many people that are in that position right now. I get it. Um, but yeah, he's also financially affecting you right now as well um, and willing to do things with other people's kids that he's not willing to do with your own. Sounds like a deadbeat. Sounds like a deadbeat. Am I the astronaut for always getting mad about having to share my bathroom with strangers? Hi, Dusty. longtime fan. I'd like to remain anonymous, please. I, a 23 female, live with my sister and her fiance, 30 female and 29 male. This is our second time trying to live together as the housing market increased a while ago, making it pretty hard to live on your own in my state. Uh, North Carolina, NC. We frequently get into arguments as they're anemic and I'm not, which means the heat will be on 24-7 and I'm just forced to roast. I've mentioned a multitude of times to them that since my room is smaller, it gets hot way quicker if the vent is closed and to just buy a portable heater as it'll lower the bills as well. Crazy, am I right? The other arguments are raised by their need to constantly have guests over. I'm a homebody, and I like a quiet home since my day-to-day -day is rather busy and loud. I'll interact with their guest if it's a weekend, and I know they'll leave soon. Side note, it's a rather large house with three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. The half bathroom is downstairs. One is by my room, which is also by the third bedroom, and the last bathroom is up in their room. When we originally moved in, I was supposed to be able to turn the third bedroom into a den for me to game in, but it just never happened as I didn't have time or the resources. So they turned it into a guest room. Here's the real issue. I'm a private person who takes pride in my designated spaces, such as my room and my bathroom. They often have unannounced guests come and stay over. Imagine waking up and finding practically strangers in your house, having a conversation and moving in prepared to spend the night. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. I wouldn't have an issue with that so much if they didn't constantly expect their guests to use my bathroom. The first time I let one of their guests use my bathroom, there was an incident where a child wiped their shitty bottom with my hand towel and put it back, which I had no idea about and used. No! Thankfully, no shit got on me, but I was pretty enraged because the child was old enough to know better. The second incident was when their family came to stay and they asked to use it. I said, sure, sometimes. That turned into a daily thing. I'd recently bought a new white fluffy bath mat, and at that point, since I was going to be the only person to use my bathroom. As you can imagine, it wasn't white for long, nor as fluffy as before, and I had to clean and fix the drain on the tub. I'm constantly reminding them it's my bathroom, as I paid for everything in there and would prefer others not use it, as they don't clean up after themselves. They never offer guests to use their bathroom, which is much larger, but in their room. It irks me, as I have habits in the bathroom and would like full access to use it whenever I have to go, without waiting for someone to get out. Not to mention stepping on a damp bathroom. Bath mat. I just wanted to partially vent, but also wanted to know, am I the astronaut for not wanting to share as they are constantly expecting me to? No, these aren't your guests, right? This is your bathroom. And also, I'm, I'm curious here, it's you and two roommates, right? I'm wondering if you're all paying equally or are they as a couple paying half and you're paying half, which means that uh, if that's the case and they're just like half and half, then you actually have rights to more of that space than you need to. <laughs> Whoa. <People are> <laughs> yeah. Were you all distracted by my, by my, by my nipple beard? Is that what's going on? <laughs> it's because of that white beard hair and this black shirt. It just stands out so much. I, um, if it's half and half here, then I think it's even more complicated. But um, so if it's half and half versus them each paying, so it's like a 33%, 33%, 33% rather, rather than 50, 50. Um, no matter what, this is your designated bathroom. They have a bathroom that they have control over, and that is part of the area that they pay rent for. Your bathroom is not the guest bathroom. Uh, get a lock. Get a door handle with a lock on it so you can control it, and you're the only one that can use it. They can tell their guests to use the bathroom that is within their control and that they're responsible for cleaning, and that's the way it should be. I'm, I'm assuming that the setup here is that you said because 
because their bathroom is in the room. They're in the master, right? Which is why it's a larger bathroom anyway. But that's why your bathroom is probably off of a hallway. So people assume it's a guest bathroom, but it's on them to communicate with people. And if someone needs to use the restroom, be like, yeah, just go through our bedroom and right there instead of directing them to your bathroom. But you can avoid all of that just by putting a lock on it put a lock like with a key. I know there are, there are locks on bathroom doors anyway. I'm saying, or you could even just do like the deadbolt kind of thing, but get a key that only you have because clearly they've abused the system here. Am I the astronaut for leaving my stepdaughter's birthday party after my husband threw out the cake I made for her? Ah, oh, shite. I, female, have been married to my husband, Jeff, for a year now. He has a daughter 12 with his deceased wife. When I first met Jeff, it was obvious that he was struggling as a single parent. For my stepdaughter's birthday, he'd usually get a cake from the bakery. This has been the case since her mom passed away. I thought I'd bake her a cake for her 12th birthday. That was last week as a gesture to show some motherly love and support. Jeff agreed and he told me what his daughter's favorite flavors are and what she likes and so on. I baked the cake in the flavor that she likes and the icing she likes, but one thing was missing, and that is the blueberries. I couldn't include them because I went to the nearest store and they didn't have them. I was running out of time and couldn't get them, so I ended up just leaving the cake as is, thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. The party started and Jeff was busy taking care of everything else. He then came into the kitchen and asked to see the cake before bringing it out. I showed it to him and he got so angry when he saw that there were no blueberries on top. He went on and on about how I didn't fully commit to making the cake and that he trusted me to take care of it and just basically saying that he should have just ordered one from the bakery. We got into an argument and he ended up taking it and throwing it into the trash can. <sighs> I was stunned as he said, you know what? Forget it. I'll go get one from the bakery. I blew up and screamed at him. He told me to stop, but I went upstairs, got dressed and left. He tried getting me to stay, but I refused and went to my parents. He later called and texted about how I overreacted and hurt him and my stepdaughter by leaving. Also said that I created the situation by not properly making the birthday cake just because I didn't put blueberries on top. I refused to respond, but my parents say he was justified since he must have felt pressured from the stress of making his daughter happy on her birthday. He keeps trying to speak to me, but I don't respond. Am I the astronaut? Did I overreact? No. Who who overreacted in this scenario, right? Who? Was it was it the person who couldn't get blueberries on top of the cake because they didn't have them at the store or is it the guy who took the cake and was like this 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 cake with the with the no blueberries is garbage? Which one? Which one overreacted? And what do you guys think? Tony Spark, who do you think overreacted here? That guy. That's the guy who overreacted here. And whenever he reached out, was he apologizing or was he just reaching out? Reaching out because you overreacted? No, his, his reaction here was 100% not okay. And also, it sounds like it was like a last minute thing, right? So you offered to do it. You were running out of time. It was a last minute thing. You couldn't get blueberries. If anything, why wouldn't he just be like, instead of I'm going to go get a cake from the bakery, why don't I run and see if I can find some blueberries? That would have been the adult response here. Instead of throwing the freaking cake in the trash, that is just disrespectful to you. And you trying to step up and do something for her is huge. And yeah, it would have been great if it had blueberries, but they didn't have them. I don't know what he expects here, but clearly he's putting a lot of pressure on, on delivering this vision that he has for his daughter. And I understand that, especially because you know his wife is deceased now. It's probably more important for him that he thinks he needs to do that. But he's got to understand that someone who's trying to help in this situation here and also someone who made it themselves with more meaning behind it than just getting it from the store is trying to help. You don't treat people like shit when they're trying to help. You just don't. It's not cool. Not cool. And I'm going to put him on the ask on scale here. Uh, I, I, I know that he's going through some stuff, right? What he did was a, was a terrible overreaction. It was not cool at all. Um, I don't think he's evil because I think the stress is what drove it behind it. Now, if he doesn't, if he doesn't apologize, if he doesn't make this right, he can very easily become an ask on one in the situation. I think the, the, the stress and dealing with, you know, the deceased ex-wife and the pressure of, of this moment drove him to do this stupid, stupid thing. 
if he doesn't apologize, he will get into ASCOM one pretty freaking easily here. You are NTA here. You're NTA. You're not the asshole for you couldn't control the fact that they didn't have freaking blueberries. He's at a two. He can walk himself back from that, but you're going to have to have a long conversation after this and be like, okay, what drove this to happen? Explain this to me because that was a huge overreaction. And if you're capable of doing that kind of thing over something that is is small like this, then I'm worried about our future. And I think you're you have every right to have that conversation and to make that statement there and let him explain. And if it is like, look, her mom always put blueberries on it. And she was made. She made sure to do it every time. And I feel like that's the one symbolic thing from this that needs to be there. Maybe you should have communicated that beforehand. Not, not you, OP, him. Maybe he should have stressed that ahead of time. And also, if that was the symbolic thing, like I said before, maybe he should have been like, oh, let me go see if I can get some blueberries instead of let me throw this in the trash and just order a brand new cake from a bakery that response doesn't make sense and him lashing out at you for it does not make sense he's got some groveling to do